what I would like to start with here is just to say, old is no go in modern leadership. So out with the spreadsheets, out with the PowerPoint, out with the meetings where you have to come and tell what have you done the last three months, six months, nine months to help the strategy. Because who win that battle every time in, in the executive room or the boardroom or wherever it is? That is, of course, those guys who come with the best PowerPoints. But it's not about that. And we've, it should not be necessary to meet just to get an overview of how we're doing a strategy. You know, you don't call every people from all departments once a month and tell them how, many, how much money have you spent and, and how much have you earned. You have a balance sheet, of course. You have a real-time overview. So welcome to Transformation Talk. Uh, I'm Tairu Hassan, uh, the director of Brightline at uh, the Project Management Institute, PMI. Today, really what we'll try to discuss here is how this transformation to modern strategic governance has become a reality. How companies can succeed in engaging the whole organization to create momentum and transparency and become much faster to adapt and also adjust when change happened. And I couldn't find a better person to discuss the topic with you today. Uh, that's why I would like to welcome, and it is a privilege actually for us to have Fleming Videriksen, uh, CEO and the co-founder of the Side Act with us. Fleming is one of the world leading experts in strategy execution management and working with strategy design, implementation, cultural change for nearly three decades in organization worldwide, Fleming has been a trusted strategic advisor and executive coach for top business and organization leaders. Fleming, as you will see, is committed to modernizing strategic leadership with the help of technology. He has spent the past 10 years mapping how to create the optimal infrastructure for successful strategy implementation. He is also the author and co-author of several books and publications on this subject. Thank you very much, very much, Tahiro. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to share what I'm thinking. So let's go directly into it. And uh, please, uh, in the end, challenge me with all kinds of opinions on, and questions. I do not think there's a right way here. There's many ways. So, um, so the title of today is basically Out with Old and in the New. And, and how do we really make strategy happen? The fact is that we have executed strategy almost the same way I monitor it since the 1950s when it really become a business discipline. So I will try to tap a little bit into that, uh, a little bit into why we have gone the way we have gone uh, with what we're doing and how we're trying to, to make this in a new way. I am very aware of that there could be many other ways to do this. So... Uh, first of all, but to set the scene, because there's also many opinions on what, what is strategy execution and what is strategy execution management. So, so my take on this is that the purpose of SAM or strategy execution management have to, to be built on two very important pillars. And uh, of course, many of you are very familiar with the part because you don't make a strategy if it's not to change the business. And the change of the business is, of course, very often how can we grow the business or how can we maybe renew ourselves or reinvent ourselves. A lot, lot of companies had to do that during COVID. Uh, but the other part, which is just as important, that is basically strategy is also about running the business and optimizing the current operations. Uh, how can we make them more fit? How can we make them more efficient? How are they ready to receive the transformation projects for changing the business? So strategy execution management is also a way of have a whole system approach. So the way I think about an organization is like a living system and, and your strategy execution should kind of cover that uh, to make sure everything can interact and work very well together. Um, so, and, and uh, some of you might know uh, <clears throat> Antonio Nieto, which I'm going to quote a couple of times here, the former president of PMI. Um, we we wrote, a, wrote a white paper together, together a couple of years ago and used this uh, model from, from his new book, uh, where, where it also kind of say, what, what is all this about? Where the one side, when it's about um, changing the business, that's, that's all about to, to start bottom up with what do we need to do in the different projects? And on the other hand, what are the big perspectives? I come back to that as just to that's kind of how I see how in capsule 
uh, strategy execution management. Uh, so why? So why really change and establish modern strategy execution management? I mean, <clears throat> many of us or many organizations uh, have the last almost three years now maybe been hit by a perfect storm as well. You know, we had COVID, which was a crisis for many organizations, societies, and, and, and have a lot of influence, a lot of people. Just in the tail of that, we, we got a war in Ukraine, we got a racing uh, inflation, we got maybe ahead of us um, a bigger crisis coming in terms of recession. And in Europe, we have also faced uh, at least um, uh, energy crisis the last six months. and. Um, and, and that is something where also our stability in terms of, uh, you know, vulnerable infrastructures uh, has to be protected better and strategies for that is also important. So what I'm saying is everyone has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. That's basically what you just explained. You know, we are met with more and more uh, surprises and changes from around us, which we need to act on and we need to act on them quite fast. So what I would like to start with here is just to say old is no go in modern leadership. So out with the spreadsheets, out with the PowerPoint, out with the meetings where you have to come and tell what have you done the last three months, six months, nine months to help the strategy. Because who win that battle every time in, in the executive room or the boardroom or wherever it is, that is, of course, those guys who come with the best PowerPoints. But it's not about that. And we, it should not be necessary to meet just to get an overview of how we're doing a strategy. You know, you don't call every people from all departments once a month and tell them how, many, how much money have you spent and, and how much have you earned. You have a balance sheet, of course. You have a real-time overview. So, and why is all this not working? Well, Brightline have documented that pretty well. Martin Reeves from Boston Consulting as well, saying that three out of four strategies, they do not reach their goals or are not getting executed or partly not reach their goals. And a bright line for a couple of years ago also documented that about 3 million US dollars is wasted every minute in strategies that are not executed. Probably something many of you are familiar with. But my point here would be, that means if you west, invest 100 million in new strategic changes or transformation projects or where you're taking your business, then 75% of that, or in other words, 75 million is on the risk of not creating any value. A risk of delivering zero value. And all what strategy execution is about is of course to achieve the intended value of the strategic effort. So we need to think about sustainability when it comes to strategy execution. So the classic problems uh, is of course, because we are manual. Uh, <clears throat> that means we, it can be difficult to have a systemic approach and have a very structured alignment how to we, we can execute our strategies. The, the, the follow-up is maybe it's, exaggerating a bit, but it's kind of, it was in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. You know, it's old fashioned, it's manual, it's not tangible. We should be able to know exactly how it is right now, at this moment, how we're driving, not only know where our KPIs are, but what is executed, where are we under risk and all that. And maybe the worst part of it is that employees, they have no clue how they can contribute. How could I maybe say that or claim that? Well, a different survey shows that 95% of all employees, they have no clue what their company strategy is about. And if they have no clue, how should they then be able to contribute? So you will need a modern way, another way to engage people in this. It's not enough just with the big speeches about now this is our strategic priorities. You have to make it relevant for me. I have to know how I can contribute. The result of this is that people like yourself, me and people in boards and executive rooms we basically do not have an overview of what's going on. It's not satisfying that we are not in control of the business future, at least where we're heading with it. So the old thing is also, we had a we had a poll here and I can see the room here is much more professional than in average. Uh, one of the first global maturity survey on strategy execution uh, shows that, that it can be downloaded for our webpage as well, uh, shows that, that uh, only about 20% or 25% of all organizations, they have some kind of, of digital tool. So in this room here or this meeting, it's the double of that. <clears throat> but it also says that the surveys that there are that survey that 80%, they have no tool for monitoring the strategy. Well, the survey is two years old. So if, if the numbers we got here today is reality, then, then uh, of course it had grown 30% since then. That is, that's fantastic. Um, and 
only very few organizations half make a distinction between running and changing the business in the strategy effort. And maybe worst of it, many organizations, they devote 60 to 100 percent of all their resources to running the business. You cannot change the business. You cannot deploy a strategy without allocating resources. But of course, you know, need to know where they are and understand if you hesitate, if, if you risk of wasting 75 percent of them. Uh, the good news is maybe that, that um, the best performing organizations, they both have a strategy execution management office and a PMO office. And half of those that were in this survey have that, either or. Um, so a little bit about the old and how it is. So if I should give my take on what is strategic or serious strategic governance and leadership, then, then I think it has to become digital. You have to have a real-time overview. You have to know what's going on. Of course, you have to integrate with our systems, but you also have the best possibility for an infrastructure to engage people at any level at your organization. Why is that important? Because we need to be able to make quick decisions. We want to have early warnings on where can we earn more money and where are we losing money, where our project uh, strategy is going off track. We need to know it now so we can adjust. That's an agile way of executing. And then that means we can adopt along the way. As all of you here know, strategy is not we make a plan now and then we follow it you know, every day in five years. We have to adjust many times, how do we get there? Like, like other roadblocks and things we need to go around. So my proposal for people is that think about deploying a GPS for your strategy. Unfortunately, most leaders, they do not have a GPS. They use a paper map and can maxim maximum see 1,500 feet, feet ahead, you know, you know, none of you will walk around where I'm in Toronto right now as a, as, a, as a visitor, you know, with a paper map, try to find your way. That's the way we run our business strategy, most of us. We have not an overview of where we're going. We have no possibility to look around corners. We have no possibility to predict. We should, of course, have that. And modern tools can help with that. And... Uh, just to quote Antonio here, as he said, that, that you know, it's really, really difficult. And, and, and that's natural for all of us. Even an organization like the one I come from, we, of course, also have our challenges when it has to comes about how do we execute strategy? How do we get an overview? And of course, like anything else is digitalized, then we should also consider how can we digitalize one of the most important functions in the organization, the strategy function. This guy here, he represents Denmark's fastest growing company, where, where I come from, but he also represents uh, Europe's sixth fastest growing uh, fintech. <clears throat> they have an immense growth and, and it's called InPay, the company. The reason they have that growth is of course, they are very, very much focused on engaging the entire organization, get people on board. They know exactly where they can contribute and they're part of defining that themselves. And it becomes very, very dynamic. And then you can early adjust, you can tell your boss, okay, something is disturbing here. So we go right on the strategy execution here. Okay, but then it's a weird decision, good. So <clears throat> my point is the future is digital infrastructure for your strategy. You could say that you need to have a, for your strategy, you, you will have a finance system for your economy. Like you should also have the right tool for your strategy execution. You should, of course, deploy a digital infrastructure that helps you to monitor cross-functionally, engage cross-functionally, top-down, can engage your portfolio companies or daughter companies, have owner strategies, everything connected. Not single spreadsheets or one who has to, to look at that. Because this can enable top-down governance, the whole cascading, the monitoring, you know, which is important for board and executives. But it can also enable that anyone in the organization can contribute to the strategy. So if you can get people on board, you know, bottom-up engagement, and maybe it's a buzzword, but it's maybe the most important thing when it comes to business execution of the strategy, get people on board. So what I'm trying to say is that the top-down governance part of this is, of course, where we have the big transformation projects, strategic choices, where to play and how to win, you know, we have the big strategic initiatives or transformation projects, and then we have a program, a portfolio management. On the other hand of, 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 uh, of strategy execution, which is also where we enable bottom-up engagement. That is when we as executives define what are the strategic focus for the next two, three, four, five years, 
What are the goals? What are the mastering values? And then we ask our units or departments to contribute with very clear plans and goals at all levels. And then, of course, follow up through our leadership and create a culture of getting things done. So strategy execution management in your infrastructure have to help you with that. It does, make, does not make project management obsolete. They're complementary for each other, those kind of systems, like it also complementary for the finance system or EAP. It has to interconnect. So uh, talking about digitalized the strategy execution and on all that, then I have kind of five recommendations seen from, from what we have learned over the years. Uh, maybe on the governance part, I'd just like to say that, that what we also learned, those who deploy uh, strategic governance at the same level as have financial governance, they are the ones who will succeed a very rigid strategic governance. So number one, reduce complexity and reduce complexity is of course give you the ability to move fast get things digital get the spreadsheets out get the powerpoints out not in the making of the strategy when we start to execute it so a digital infrastructure where you basically create simplicity have strategic hierarchies across whatever you like to have where you can dive down to every single person and why you have it's important the second good advice here we would like to give is decide quickly and, and one of the four big ones, McKinsey and Company, they have documented that those who are deciding quickly, they will outperform their competitors. And that means they will be five times as innovative. They will be two, have three times as much growth. The health of the organization will be three times higher. The employee is three times more happy. Financial performance is two and a half times better. And they are more resilient, two times. So just take that into consideration when you're thinking about how are you running things? How do you make it visible for your board and executives? And agile execution, of course, equals you need to have an urgency mapping. What's coming up? What's going on? What's off track? What are the risks? And you need to see it now so you can act on it right now. <clears throat> but back to the people and back to Einstein. I think he said the most clever quote for strategy execution ever. Nothing happens until something moves. Because why are we talking about all this today? We have to make things move. We have to engage people so they can make things move. It's about acting efficiently. And if you know where you have to put your priorities, then you will, of course, be much more efficient. And you will cut out the things which is not important, which is another issue with strategy execution. But to the point, that makes things move. And have a quick overview of things. Of course, you will have my page for people where they can follow what's important for them and they can quick see your views. And this is a wow platform, by the way. But, but <clears throat> um, where you, the different charts will engage you what has to happen. But to succeed with strategy, I have a fourth recommendation. Uh, I travel quite many, many days a year and I prefer the pilots. They are not using paper maps to find their way from Europe to where I am, like Toronto, as an example. I like that they have a lot of instruments in the cockpit where they can track consistently. They can calibrate to weather. They can calibrate to unforeseen things. Even, you know, sometimes when it's very, very, bad, very bad weather, then, of course, <clears throat> all the GPS and tracking system would put the flight nicely down on the ground and the pilot would not touch anything because then the risk goes wrong. We are going the same way with strategy execution. We need to monitor, we know, need to know what's going on. We need to be able to look ahead. We need to be able to compare things. We cannot do that in spreadsheets, real time, knowing what's going on, what just changed a minute ago. So real time strategic overview, extremely important. And we need to have confidence in our data where we have the risk. And if you're a military organization, then you of course look both on confidence level and risk and stuff like that and combine those things. But most important, maybe again, I've said that maybe a couple of times, but very important is, of course, we adapt seamlessly. And that's much easier if everybody have an overview. That's transparency around how things are going on. So then we can actually much easier adapt to the situation. And even people accountable for things will know what's going on and they will adjust by themselves. So, and of course, we have to try to predict the outcome. So we also know very early oh, here's something we might need to, to, uh, to understand because modern infrastructures for this, they have, of course, different systems who look into the organization's execution culture so they can see how efficient is it, where are their risk of failing, uh, and all sorts of things like that. So 
all this uh, is about two things. Should we keep old versus new? And, and of course, that's a choice. I'm not saying spreadsheets are not good for anything. I'm just saying <clears throat> we should really think about how can we have a new approach to execution and get our executives to take this very, very seriously because it also will change their leadership. So the last few things I want to say, it actually makes it a lot easier if you work on infrastructure. And it makes decision much more clearly if you have a good decision mandate. And of course, you will need to work on having access 24 seven and then clear lines of communication, very simple principles to succeed with execution. And real time overview 24 seven, of course, we will have to have healthy meetings as you have all the time, get people engaged and getting things done, review it and all that. But instead of meeting to talk about what have we done, then we talk about what should we do with the current situation because we have the overview of it. <clears throat> and each employee, of course, can know how they should work with things, where they're contributing, where they can do more or less and all that. So it's important for us both to be able to look into the past and see and compare how we're doing now, the last months, last year, whatever, at the same time where we are trying to drive the business towards the future with a lot of help from digital. One of the things I see, see, foresee coming also with what we are working with is that AI and other things will start to influence your strategy making process. So when you start to feed systems with your strategic priorities or pillars, whatever, then it will over time start to suggest you maybe have to look into this KPI or those who are focused on that in the past, you know, they did not have so much luck. All these things is going to influence the way we are working with execution. But most important, of course, engage the entire organization that will make you succeed, especially if they can see how they can contribute. It makes it possible to cover cross functionally. And as I just mentioned before, it's all about data. We have to trust the data, you know, not base our strategic decisions and corrections on assumptions, but let's just have real time data that can help us to make the right decisions. Of course, we need to have data on what are we doing? What are we executing? How is our uh, goals and KPIs doing? Also have to distinguish between strategic goals and KPIs. What are the risk factors that are influencing us and all sorts of things? All that is of course possible if you go digital. So I think it's time to prepare for the new and, and look into how would be the right way to do this. And, and of course, I'm happy to discuss that and hear your opinions on that. Um, if you think about a company like, like the one I represent, the Side Act, uh, we work across all industries. We have anything from the National Church of Iceland as a client to parliament, insurance companies, fintech, biotech, uh, manufacturing companies, and all sorts of things. It's not really about what industry you're in. It's about how seriously are you taking the execution of your strategy. Many people say nothing happened since last year we had the strategy meetings. There are two maybe good answers for that. One is, yes, it's correct, nothing happened because we never got to the execution very seriously. The other part is it might not have been monitored, so nobody knows what happened, which is also a fact in many cases. That was my uh, short input to how I see digitalization of, of strategy execution. Of course, there'd be a lot more about AI and how that will influence that. Um, but um, let's make strategy walk the talk. And, and in, in this quotation here, you're saying, the solution is not less strategy or fewer values and fewer long-term goals, but rather working toward those goals with the, a better ability to adapt strategy along the way. To be able to do this require quick action, reactions, decision based on real time data, and not the least inability to get everyone in the organization engaged in making the strategy happen. I, 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 I like this quote here. And I hear you also in the presentation talking about the data, you know, getting the data, making the decision on the data. Can you tell us more? about that data gathering and uh, making sure that you have the right data as well. Because sometimes people say, Jigo, you know, garbage in, garbage out. So how do you uh, handle that data gathering part and uh, making sure that you have the right data? And I think one of the things you, you will need to do when you look into how do you uh, become strong at executing strategy in the organization, then you should first of all, uh, carry out a diagnosis of your organization's ability to execute uh, strategy. And part of that is to, of course, to defining what are the pain points that can move you from being 
national champion to, to be world champion or wherever you want to go and what are the things you should solve. So, so that's, I think that's also what this is about. Be, be aware of where we good and where can we improve. But then you ask about the data and of course I would ask, I would answer that. I think that lies in the process of that. When you define your strategies, you understand what data do you need? One of the hardest things for uh, most executives is actually to work with good KPIs. They might be able to define, or we all might be able to define, what should the revenue be and what should the profit loss be and all that. But if you really have to have good decision making, then you also have to have good KPIs that unit sets or team heads, they know that's what they should focus on to deliver. And if they focus on the right things, they will also define the right projects, transformation projects, or just strategic, strategic initiatives which contribute to move the 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 uh, the performance part of it. So so for me, data comes three in three ways. First of all, that we are very clear where we're heading, so people have a clear line of sight when they start to help to define uh, their their strategic intent and initiatives, um, and and not let units just work separately, but it's it's connected. Um, the other part is, of course, that that you then uh, are serious about the monitoring. Then you can get data in a, in diff different infrastructures by integration by APIs and define you need this and that here, so you get the right decision board for yourself as well. So garbage in, garbage out. I think that's uh, that's really the part where you qualify your strategy intent and how you engage people in it, and how you run that. That's that's clearly. And then everybody are working few uh, against a few common goals. They all know. Then then you'll have the right things um, as part of it. There's many other solutions to this, of course, but but that's at least one of them. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Fleming. And uh, I I just wanted to add two things. But as you were introducing Antonio, I just wanted to say Antonio was a. Uh, the former chair of PMI uh, Board of Directors, and uh, he's a PMI uh, fellow. And uh, in the data, the, I mean, as you, uh, you mentioned, every 20 seconds, uh, 1 million USD was wasted due to poor implementation of strategies. And we were kind of uh, taking it uh, in a year, it becomes about 2 trillion. And uh, I mean, close to, I mean, the, more than actually the GDP of Canada, or I mean, the GDP of uh, Brazil, and, uh, and uh, it is actually more than the GDP of the five top economies in Africa. So uh, it is a lot of money that is wasted and uh, organizations at least cannot afford. And I mean, the world uh, should find ways of uh, better using these uh, resources. I want to ask you maybe a more personal question here because I, as you were presenting, I was seeing your passion and uh, for the topic, but what is driving you? Why, why, why trying to solve this issue? What is motivating you? Yeah, a lot of things. I think um, um, part of my personality is maybe also to try to solve the impossible and then believe I can do it. You know, and and uh, there have been been many many uh, many situations on this journey where we have said, "How to do this?" But I can tell you how it started. We we work with uh, with uh, one of the world's biggest or the biggest producer of insulin and in. in um, in, um, in a region of 25 countries and stuff like that. And we were presenting uh, or training the executives in, in um, strategic execution and giving an idea how you can be good at that. And then we also delivered, you know, a lot of spreadsheets, a lot of PowerPoints and, and uh, the CEO and the CFO for the region was so friendly to invite for a beer in the evening and say, oh, you're doing very well. And this is very interesting, but the, how the heck to expect us to follow up on strategy in 25 countries. You're part of defining the strategy and, and then, then we just pray to that things are done till we come back next year. So I think that was, we have of course many times talked about what can we do and we were inspired by, by uh, financial accountability. Can you make it measurable, quantifiable and inspired by, I have a philosophical background, so it took a while before I got into finance, but, but, but uh, inspired by if things are transparent, then you'll have an educated discussion at your executive meetings or board meetings, wherever you have them. If you have a lot of blah, blah, you know, then, then, then uh, well, that's maybe a hard way to say it, but th then it's more hard to really focus on what should we, we talk about. So what drives it is that uh, there are so many good uh, project managers, strategic managers, consultants and all that out there. Uh, they just like to, you know, uh, 
it for I think sometimes it would be nice for us to have more than a hammer, you know, when, when we have to get things done. And we are trying to tap into that and, and with our ambitions, and we are learning every day for those. We are working with what are the needs and how do we need to adapt to that. I think that's what drives us, just to make it it changes this. It's we talk about sustainability. This is also about sustainability, not wasting money. And I, I'm encouraging uh, attendees to use the Q&A function there to ask questions. There are some questions that are already coming in. I want to take one, uh, which is very linked here, and it's coming from Fabi. And uh, Fabi is saying, it seems like what uh, you are proposing, uh, you are proposing a strategic, strategically driven PPM system. How is a PPM different from the digital platform approach that you are proposing? A PPM meaning a project portfolio management uh, tool and so on. Uh, I think this is the, the difference is that that project management and and, and portfolio uh, management is focused on specific portfolios and saying how to do that and and those things integrate fine. This is a whole system approach, but of course there are similarities. But what I would say, my my point or comment to this is you have to use the right tools for for the right uh, topics. So you don't eat soup with a fork, you know. You you don't do your your bookkeeping uh, in a CRM system or in in a in a spreadsheet if you want to keep the overview. And I think you should run projects and project management tools and, and programs, and you should run strategic uh, governance and all that in in specific for that. So tools also have to interact. And of course, as Fappy is saying, there are of course similarities between some of it. You know, clearly, awesome. that's also why. Many, uh, which are very well educated uh, via PMI, uh, should step in and take a bigger role and see the big pictures when it comes to strategy execution management, because that expertise, that is really something that can be used. The tools we're talking about here, I think most of them are not solving uh, the big cross-functional things. How do you make things run across the silos and drive that through and all that? How do you get a full scale and all that and engage people at a level in, in whatever is important with strategy? Strategy is not only about portfolio management and projects. It's much more than that. Wonderful, wonderful. That's, that's and, and there is another question that is coming from uh, Lori. And uh, of course, you, mentioned, you were mentioning at some point that you need to get people engaged. And her question then is, says, how do you propose to combine personal performance management and strategy execution? So how do you, because sometimes there is a, the, I mean, the human resources tool where it is personal and then you have a strategy execution for the organization. So how do you, I, I suspect that question is going in the context of performance management and uh, accountability and biz. So I'll, I'll let you answer that. Uh, I, I think that, that um, first of all, I, I like to say when you work with, with uh, also when you work with maybe also to the former question when you work with strategy then there exist a lot of different strategic frameworks you can use balanced scorecard okrs you can use pillars critical factors strategic focus areas enablers and all that in a modern way of working in a modern platform you can figure it like you want to have it you not follow you know you have your own way of doing it that ties into the performance management as well because part of these things are there will be things that I personally should perform on, which is part of my development plan. You will not use a strategy tool for that. You will use another tool for that. But I can, of course, when it comes to a strategy, part of my strategic performance, I might have one, two, three, four, maybe more initiatives or actions I am accountable for. I might have one or two KPIs lower in, in the organization or high organization I'm, I'm accountable for. So, so I think it's part of the engagement. Most people I have met, when they have the possibility to contribute strategically, they say, yes, thank you. And they like that it creates transparency, not just that I've told them, you, you should do this and that. And then I, because I'm uh, full of ideas, then I come back in six weeks and say, why didn't I get this, you know, <laughs> six months? They said, but you said this and I said that. So when things are well documented, then you will also have another dialogue about how you're performing. It's clearly what we have agreed to have delivered on strategically. And diversions for that will be discussed because you're mapped, it's, it's real time. You can discuss it with your boss or your colleagues and all that. You can see who you're depending on, so all that. Don't know if it's a good answer for it, but uh, Wonderful. Then thank you. Again. Thank you. And I have another one here. 
And this is more, I mean, I, I was picturing when you were talking about piloting with map and so, a paper map and so on. And, and I was wondering, like, uh, maybe this was the beginning and then maybe you have a compass that you use to measure the distances and to see how far you are from things and so on. But things are moving so fast today. So I, I want you to share with us, how is the market maturing in the adoption of digital tool for strategy execution? Are you, are you seeing any change? Because you've been, you've been in the market for for some time now yeah we are, we are we are closing up to 10 years in, in in this market and and with our approach i think um i think it's happening right now actually it's it's a quite excuse me for anyone on this call but i i see many organizations are quite immature on the way they are working with straight execution in a modern way but what i see is that comes more and more requests now for top executives and management, can we do this smarter? Can we keep the other tool existing that support this need? Two years ago, we didn't get too much of that. You know, we really have to figure out who are the pioneers in this. There's still pioneers, a lot in there, but it becomes more normal. The, the request for how can we get help on this in a smarter way uh, is, is raising. I think it's because of the things I started this presentation with. Uh, I think, of course, you can say COVID helped to mature many digital tools in many organizations like this. But I think another thing which is really calling for this right now is, okay, then we, we have a war going on, then we have crisis, we have, we have financial you know, risk interest going up and all that, and as I said. I think executives start to get that they need to act fast and, and to be able to take the right decisions when you have to act fast and not only do decision only based on gut feeling and assumptions, then you would like to have some real time to know where you're heading. And instead of you trying to turn the whole ship this way, uh, then you can dive down and see where are we on this strategic area. That's really where we are having trouble, right? Um, the other part is maybe this is more maybe a quote for why it could be important, as of course, early adjustment and all that. But when you have been sick, because organizations which have been through crisis, you can see, you can compare them to human systems, people that are sick, right? So when you have survived your sickness, it doesn't mean you're fit. Then you have to recover and to make fast recovery to, to become fit again. Then if you again can be very focused and to the point and structured, you can drive your organization to that point uh, in a completely different way. So, so I think the adaption is coming because of we as executives have that pressure and need to to do things clever more clever <laughs> we, we I, need I, we have transformed everything else in the organization we are streamlined we have optimized we have digitalized everything except from the strategy office except the thing that has to help us to exist in two three four five years no, i like i like the analogy here when you recover from a illness doesn't mean that you're fit you need to do something you need to prepare yourself and then of course be able to also withstand withstand uh, the next crisis of course if i take the same analogy as as part of the sickness maybe you uh, develop some 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 resistance as well so that uh, in the next round you'll be better prepared to 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 uh, to face some of the challenges that have uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, this I want to shift. Maybe I am hearing, uh, I'm seeing a question from Elvis and uh, Elvis Simon, and uh, he's uh, he he's asking. I think um, again, uh, sometimes I need to be careful using the gender. The um, but the question is, how do you deal with vagaries of the political cycle in strategy execution within a public sector setting? Um, yeah uh so so the question is more i know when we were we were talking last year with the conference on uh, energy and so on so in, in the public sector how do this apply it applies very well uh first of all um i, I would say well you're private or you are public then to have a digital infrastructure that sets the way you do it. You control the logic, your business work with, with the strategy and all that. That helps everyone and makes it easier to engage people. If you look at the public sector, uh, right now we, we, um, uh, we, are, we have a lot of collaboration with utilities and, and some places in the world, utilities are owned by municipalities. And that means that, that um, uh, there's a big need for also let the citizens know what's going on. So when you work this way, you can also visualize 
what are you doing? And specifically, uh, right now, there's a lot uh, attention to climate. Uh, at the conference we had uh, in, in November in Denmark, uh, David Miller, former mayor of Toronto, was also speaking about all the challenges because uh, you know 75% of all all our global warming issues that comes from the big cities because that's where people live. So part of the thing is when you talk about public sector, then most municipalities globally uh, they they are committed to live up to the Paris Convention as an example, which, which is about how do we get global warming down and all that and have a lot of things going on. For political reasons, some political people like to say, okay, how can we make it visible for our citizen what we're doing? For the other reason is, it's not enough just to measure a few, few, you know, a few scientific KPIs on CO2 emission and all that. What really is interesting, what are we doing to change this? And we can map that and see that effect. So that's one way public sector can use it. Another thing that we, we are, we are working with some ministries and also a parliament uh, is, of course, how do you control those big rollouts of projects? As an example, we have one thing going on now where, uh, where you kind of have a master strategy and then you have 173 institutions who basically need to do the same thing, 320 or something things. And it never happens through the municipality because half of them don't do it, they don't have the overview. Then you can roll it out and you can change in the master with change down there, but all aggregation of what they're doing coming up. So it gives you a completely other, other visibility, but maybe most important, uh, we have a few places where it actually, I would say where it's proven, it supports the democracy. Because when you have a city council or regional council, whatever, or bigger political programs for a, a part of, let's say Ontario or something like that, then decisions are made. How do we connect from that priorities through the administration, getting things done, that makes completely visible, what are we doing to actually achieve these things? And a classic thing, I think I, some years ago, I spoke with the treasury board here in, 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 in Ontario, and they, they said, what would be wonderful is when we do not when political do cost cutting, then we take to back 2% of something. Then we allocate it to three new things. We send the money back and they go out to the same offices. And those people in those offices, uh, they, they, will, they will do exactly what they've done all the time. You have no chance to follow. How is this the political priority, strategic priority actually? What kind of things are you now doing to make that moving except for maybe a, a goal that people have to be better to write or speak Danish or English or whatever. Uh, so, so it can play a big role there. And then I think most public sector have issues like big corporates with all the cross-functional things. How do we uh, get across all the steel pipes, you know, and, and make things work there? So, so that's another part. Sorry, long answer. No, thank you so much. Thank you. And I, I, I'll bring a, a, the next question from Kevin. Kevin has been very active actually in the chat, uh, sharing uh, that uh, he was able to develop uh, a low code uh, solution to help his organization uh, actually address the challenge, but later on there was uh, an ERP solution that came in. So uh, the question coming from Kevin is, what are your views on using low-code, no-code development solution and a citizen developer strategy to enable organizations to build, customize, and maintain their own strategic executions solutions, best used in approach to buy off the shelf third-party uh, SaaS uh, solution? Um. I, be, I believe very much in in um, in collective intelligence first of all, and and um, I also be part of running big things that my colleagues have in in terms of where you look at a society or things and how can you can you create the collective intelligence on things. Uh, so I appreciate actually that effort uh, quite a lot, uh, but I can also say to Kevin we we but we are also in our case we are of course a third party SaaS solution what I'm representing on this, where, where we are, of course, building something, where we are trying to, to serve this. And of course, part of a, uh, a company's growth also like ours can, of course, be there. What should be what should be um, what should be public code and what should be ours and all that? And how do we go about that? Uh, so so I think it's a good idea. And I really appreciate all those people um, that are developing things. We are right now working together with a, with a, another, which is a public code or, or 
where, where for something that supports climate and stuff like that, then you easily can integrate with. I think we have a, a shared responsibilities to do this, but of course we are also a listed company. So we are, in my case, we also are responsible to deliver at a certain point some money back to the shareholders. And I just want to share with also the participant that uh, PMI has developed uh, a citizen developer learning opportunities where, where people can understand what, what uh, the low code, no code, um, what looks like and how to put a governance around it and so on. So people can learn more on that learning because of course there need to be some consolidation. There need to be ways of uh, um, using the, 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 the talent that people have in organization. Let's move to one, one question and, uh, and I'm, I'm glad like many questions are flowing in. Uh, for this one, I will try to combine uh, really the question that uh, Patrice is asking on uh, culture, the cultural shift uh, um, we have uh, we've another question that is more about um, uh, the governance in organization. And uh, this one, I want to, to help us also, because sometimes we can talk, but people meet, we will need to hear maybe concrete example and so on. Uh, so if you are looking at some of your most successful clients, how do the governance model typically change after introduction of a tool, uh, a strategy execution tool, a platform like yours? And if you can share an example, let's say on the leadership side and also on the cultural and mindset side uh, that uh, Patrice is mentioning in, in, in the question. So um, cultural wise, I think to have an infrastructure where things become transparent and all that, that, that means also you can engage people at all level, but it is also a cultural change to implement something like this because uh, we had one client in France, as an example, after nine months of use, they come back and say, your, your software doesn't work. Oh, you say, why? Nobody is updating anything. I'll get no data. Okay, so the first question was, so have you, uh, do you ever look at the status in your one-to-ones? It was the CEO who said that, with the people who refer to you? They say, no, yeah, I do not. We do not have it on the leadership meetings. He said, maybe the first question is, would it be worthwhile considering that? So that's a very simple part of the cultural change. He said, yes, it is. And, and he started doing that. That means, okay, now he's the people referring to him. We start to ask the people below them and say, okay, we need to get updated. It's important if we take it up in the meetings. So that's an example of a cultural shift in leadership. You know, you can deploy all the infrastructure you want to, but if you don't take it in your leadership style, nothing will happen. So that would be, be one part. An example of another client we have is a retail chain. Um, <clears throat> where I think uh, they had to, they had one goal, which was to 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 make people and culture uh, make people uh, just as important competitive assets and as all the goods on the shelves. And and what they did is they of course run a four year strategy on that specifically. Uh, they they went from having difficulties to get people to people are queuing to work in their stores. The academics want to work in that organization. They got rewarded for all their, their, um, their, their things they were doing, or the leadership and all that. But what they also have done now, they took and took each of the stores and the head of strategy and, and head of uh, HR, they went to all the stores, they did a culture survey and how things were going, took each of the store, and then they gathered all the employees to discuss, okay, this is results, how it looks by you. So what do you think you would like to do here in your store to make... Uh, it a better place to work, but also that you will will grow your your ability to be, uh, um, what do you say, be good at, at be uh, selling and stuff like that, uh, and 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 make people happy to come here and serve them better. And they defined initiative and action in each of the stores, which was monitored or followed up. This year here, they now have tied the store managers bonuses to to how are they executing strategy in the coming years. So, so that's so another way. Uh, I can give more examples if you want, but- uh, Yeah, yeah I know, I know, time. I know. And the, the time is also running there. Uh, we are just about to hit the hour. So I just want to, again, on behalf of the team and uh, uh, thank you uh, so much for the time that uh, you took to share this insight. I want to thank also all attendees who have been with us here. And uh, I hope uh, uh, they saw the, the strong business case at least to have a digital infrastructure uh, moving from the old to the new, uh, and also the governance structure that is needed and the simple um, uh, keys that one could use. Of course, 
when we say simple, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we don't maintain the rigor that is needed to move things out. I did also share the book where you will have uh, contributed an article. Uh, uh, it's the book that we just released uh, um, this year. So Building Resilient Organizations. Do take a look at it. It is available in our uh, website and uh, in uh, Amazon as well. It could be a book actually that you don't read from end to end, but uh, you look at uh, uh, the relevant articles and uh, are able to gather uh, great, great insight that you can apply in your organization. So. As uh, we start in 2023, uh, I was on the right foot. Uh, if you have any closing remark, uh, Fleming, the floor is yours. And then we'll close it today. Thank you all for taking the time to be with us. And I was seeing that all continent, uh, many countries are represented today. Uh, just thank you very much. I, I would really hope that we hear from you guys what you're doing. And I think that most important is that we are taking it seriously, whether we then are using PowerPoint spreadsheets on your digital tools. I think that that's point number one, you know. Uh, so thank you very much for, for being here and, and challenging and listening today. We hope we can learn a lot more from you in the future. Thank you all and uh, have a great day.